In this video, we're going to have a look at a few different functions with uh, creating and editing our walls that we started in the last video. I'm going to use a stretch tool at the moment in order to make this space wider. So shortening some walls, moving some walls, and increasing the length of other walls. We have to be very careful though what else we have in our file at the time. If we've got other elements such as splines that are intersecting these walls, these are going to get destroyed or moved um, when I try to stretch. So what I'm going to do is turn them off. So I'm going to go layer, hide layer. Secondly, if I use my marquee tool, which is what I'm going to use to stretch, but I use it on the thick version, the multi-story version or all floors version, it's going to change every floor and that could be fantastic or it could be very very dangerous. I'm going to change to my thinner marquee which means that when I stretch it's only going to change this floor. And then thirdly I can't stretch while I've got grouping enabled. So I need to go click here, suspend groups or that's edit grouping, suspend groups to make sure that the grouping is temporarily suspended. So even if I've grouped something I need to temporarily suspend it because it won't work otherwise. Now once I've drawn this marquee, while it's still flashing nothing's going to work, I need to go edit, reshape, stretch and then I can <coughs> move. If I'm not sure how far to move I don't need to click in the box or any particular side so I'm going to click outside the box this time just so I can use a reference and understand what I've got. So I can see here when I measure that my current internal measurement is 4,400. If I want to make that say 7,000, I'm going to click and increase that by typing in a new value 2600, enter. Double click to get rid of the marquee and then I'll just put a line to it again to check and we see that that's 7000 as desired. So that's how we can use our stretch tool. Now we see that that stretched everything accordingly and if I want to I can now click this to re-enable the grouping and um, nothing has been destroyed through that process. What I could quickly do is change, uh, if I wasn't sure and I was using my thick marquee, I'd have to check toggle between the stories to make sure I hadn't made any changes that I didn't want to do. Now it's very easy to forget about things and so if I was to flick down the stories there's nothing there. I could have destroyed my terrain mesh if I used a multi um, stretch. I could have destroyed my survey drawing if I used a multi mesh. And so even if you're not necessarily thinking about your own drawings, things that you've already added, you have to think about those references as well uh, because they can get affected and very very dangerously potentially also if you don't remember or don't realize that you've made an error and then instead of undoing you just continue on working, saving, saving, saving over the top of you need to go in and try to recover that file and that can be very problematic. I've once lost days and days of work by doing that. Thankfully I could recover the file um, but it's definitely worth important, definitely worth noting and important to check. Great, so I'm going to draw a couple more of these. Let's move this in a meter. Now, I'm just showing you walls, but while we're on the subject of walls, we really need to understand the door and window tool and its relationship to us. So in this case, you noticed that I, in the last video, I was trimming some of these walls out where I didn't want them. However, if I want to keep a doorway or a window, I don't trim out the wall, I actually add a door to it. So that could be a rectangular hollow door, which effectively looks like I'm cutting a hole, but most importantly what that means is if I select it, it might not necessarily be the full height of the wall. It might only be a partial height, in this case 2100 height. So if I was to select this wall, just this one wall, to keep it simple, we'd see that this wall has a hole in the middle of it. So if I didn't add an opening, if I just cut the wall, it would cut the wall all the way up and I wouldn't get this wall above. 
So it's very important that we understand the difference between those and think about the construction aspect of our process because that's what we're effectively doing. We're building a, a digital building. Uh, whether we want it to be an opening that cuts the whole way through of a wall or whether it's only a partial height opening. I'm going to delete this one now, so select delete, go into my door tool and I'm going to change from my um, empty door openings down to my hinged doors and I'm going to choose this option here, our standard door 21 and in this case I'm going to place my door in the middle. How do I do this? I could choose to place the door using the center point or I could choose to place the door using an end point, anchor point or the other one. Now I don't mind either of these um, depending on what you're doing and often even I will just place it just to be fast choosing which way maybe I want the door to swing and then I might decide or find I was inaccurate when I was placing this so I might need to move it. So I'll I'll tend to, particularly when I'm doing doors and windows, just place them as quickly as I can and then move them as much as I need to to get it right. So instead of that being 56, I'm going to move it across 6 millimeters. So I end up with 50 millimeters on both sides. So again, it's good to be perfect in ARCHICAD. Uh, we want to be millimeter accurate. It's going to make our dimensioning and our editing much better later on and make a better model, uh, we can do that straight away or we can add it later. Now to finish, we can do the same thing with windows. So I could have a, a very standard window. Let's make this 900 high, 2400 high. And I'm just going to add one in this case. And I'm going to make sure that it is 900 millimeters off that edge. So again, I did it like I explained just before. I didn't really think or plan too carefully about where I placed it, but then I could edit it. The other thing that we could do, particularly with a, a window, as long as this wall is consistent, one wall, if I select one window, I could then multiply this window. So let's say I wanted a spread of 1800 between windows, as in from the start of one window to the next window and I want to unclick pick path so this is the multiply tool I can click this and place multiple windows along this wall now we can see that there's going to be some issues with this I'm not necessarily wanting to do this but we can see that's how it works and so we placed one window and then we multiplied it. So if we wanted to create multiple windows, for instance, that would be a very fast way of doing it. And dimensionally accurate. Again, we're being perfect with dimensions. So we don't cut a hole in a wall in order to, or break a wall, I might say, in order to place a door or window. Instead, we insert a door or window into that wall. And of course, with a window, we could stretch it graphically, adjust it numerically or go into the settings and change it that way and again we could move it around if we wanted to in order to make it maybe a more rationalized number. So a little bit more information on how we use our wall tool. Um, in the next video we'll have a quick look at the differences between the basic window, sorry, wall and the composite wall structure and why we might use one over the other.